We've seen the title of the video, you know what's coming, it's a good old fashioned head to head and I think these are two of the most popular drivers of 2024. The question is, how do they perform in the hands of the average golfer and which one comes out on top? And it could well be that the result of that test is determined right here indoors at Hollywell Golf Club, Trackman data. The numbers are behind me, I'm going to hide that for the time being because what I really want to know is two things. How do each of these perform? How do they differ? But maybe more importantly, are they any different than any other driver I've tested so far? Or is it just more of the same? Well, that's the first ball out on the fairways. It not only sounded fantastic, the ball flight was superb. And I've got to say, I've recorded data that's going to reveal why this driver is a real interesting product. That's a GT2 from Titleist. But the question is, is it any better than what is already out there? And in this case, that Ping G430 10K Max. And on those two shots, there doesn't seem a great deal to split them, but there is certainly a very different sound off the two, and I know which one I prefer. It's a solid ball, you know. I haven't missed a drive with the uh, Titleist product out on the fairways. It seems to really fire off the face. Just leak that one a tad. It's done really well though again. Ball speeds off these drivers are both very, very good. So if you're spending £500 on a driver, I don't care what anybody says, you want it to look good. And from a looks perspective, I think that the Titleist new lineup is, and has been for the last couple of years, it's moved on quite a bit and it looks superb. Arguably one of the best looking drivers on the marketplace right now. In terms of both shelf appeal, in terms of what you see underneath, but then from the crown again, although I would always prefer a matte crown, I've never been a fan of turbulators and not overly keen with the way the Ping product looks at a dress. So for me, hands down, this uh, Titleist model is a clear winner on those visible stakes. And although only a very minor issue, Titleist have absolutely smashed it with their head cover. They've upped the ante, the quality on that is as it should be when you're spending 500 quid. And I'm afraid Ping, they're really gonna have to up their game on the next lineup of these drivers because it's, uh, it's ill-fitting and just not that good. Just to clear up uh, shaft, which is hugely important in my opinion, uh, Denali 55 gram uh, reg is what I'm using the Titleist driver and I'm using the CB Alter uh, 55 reg in that ping. And I think for me, and I'll discuss it in the summary, is that is one key thing that you have to get right. Forget MOI, shaft head combination is what is hugely important for control down that fairway in terms of dispersion. That's Titleist again and What's been really interesting with the Titleist driver is the ball flight has been extremely straight. There's been no deviation in ball flight, either left to right, right to left. It's just felt solid. And uh, it doesn't make all the claims in terms of MOI, but it's certainly the product that uh, I found easiest to keep square and therefore hit straight. That's ah, another super ball. Drilled in slightly lower. And uh, again, a little bit louder, the sound off the ping. And like I said, I've always had an issue with the sound of ping drivers. It's definitely been uh, dumbed down considerably with this model. But if I was choosing between the two, from a sound perspective, I prefer what comes off of the Titleist product. But I reckon if you went up fairway, and obviously we're going to have a look now, there's very little to split those two in terms of where they finish. Right, so I've hit four balls with each out on the fairways. I think I hit 10, 11 balls with each inside. So I've got a fair reflection in both terms of dry ball data and real term what they've done outside. So the first question is, what separates them? 
Well, in dry ball data, as you can see, very little. Um, and they're both pretty much optimal numbers as well. On the day I tested, which was yesterday, sl swing speed was slower, uh, perhaps relative to what I would hit out on the golf course. And if you have a look at all those parameters, spin, launch, uh, carry distances, they're all optimum for my swing speed, which on the day we think was sort of around the 92 mile an hour. So they've got there in slightly different ways, but ultimately, you know, nothing to split them. And then you come out on the fairways and what you've not seen is where each driver sort of landed or finished. But what I can tell you, and I'm looking forward now, is that every ball has finished in virtually the identical place. So there's nothing to split them at all in terms of performance, in my opinion. Um, there is no clear winner, far from it. They're just down to personal preferences. What I will say is one of the biggest myths, in my opinion, um, or misleading, can be this MOI. I don't think that there's any great claim from Titleist about their MOI with the GT2 driver. And obviously the 10K is a big deal in what Ping are playing on. But all, I have never seen, a, if you hit a bad swing, you, you'll have bad results. It's as simple as that. And I've not found a driver yet that's made massive difference in terms of this high MOI. What I will do feel is that you have to match the shaft to the head components correctly. If you don't get that bit right that suits your swing, that's when you're going to have issues. So it comes back to custom fit in ensuring. If you're looking at dispersion, and I'll throw in now just the internal stuff that we did on Trackman, you'll see I was leaking the ball down the right a little bit uh, with both clubs. So neither helped me in terms of hitting the ball straight. Well, that's all down to my personal uh, swing characteristics and performance. So I hope it has helped. It's helped me in some ways. I'm a big fan of this GT2 driver because it performs incredibly well, looks really good, sounds really good, but ultimately it performs exactly the same as the ping driver as well. But I choose one over the other because of the reasons I've just stated, and you might do the exact opposite. The key is always the same. Go and get custom fit, make sure it works for you, but ultimately two very, very good drivers that will perform really well in the hands of most average golfers. Right, that's me done. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all soon.